Well, thank you, Jolene, um, for the introduction. As she said, my name is Deanna Cameron. I work for AMAC as one of its Medicare agents. We're also educators and advisors in Medicare um, for members and prospective members of AMAC. Um, so yes, the closed captioning is on so that you can read along if that is um, easier to navigate for you. And we will be monitoring, I believe, for questions um, as they come up. Um, you can certainly reach out in the middle of the broadcast with any questions that you have, and we'll open it up, I believe, at the end for questions as well. So we're gonna dive into Medicare and its components today. Um, I'm an agent among about 30 that work in our three call centers. Um, like I said, providing education and sales of Medicare products. The presentation that I'm providing today is an expanded version of the information that we go over on the phone with our customers. Um, because Medicare is very complex, we provide this service to our members and prospective members so that they can make an educated choice with their Medicare, with their medical coverage once they receive Medicare. We understand it's complicated, um, but that's part of our job is to try to simplify it a bit, uh, give you the education that you need to make that educated choice. Um, that's what our agents are here for. So the first thing I'd like to start out with is what is Medicare and what are some of your options as you become eligible for Medicare? We're gonna go over information that our members would typically ask as they become Medicare eligible. So to start with, there are four reasons that you would become eligible for Medicare. The most likely is that you turn 65, um, but you can also become eligible for Medicare under the age of 65 in a few different circumstances. Once you are on disability and have been receiving Social Security disability benefits for 25 months, just over two years, you become eligible for Medicare. You can also become eligible for Medicare after four months of receiving benefits for dialysis for end-stage renal disease. And you also become eligible for Medicare if you're diagnosed with ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. So any one of these circumstances can make you eligible for Medicare. So what exactly is Medicare? Medicare is available to you in four parts. So we're gonna talk first about the two parts um, that are available through Social Security. We refer to these as Part A and Part B of Medicare or Original Medicare. If you hear someone speak of Original Medicare, they are speaking of the Medicare Part A and the Medicare Part B. So these parts are not provided to you from a sales agent. They are provided through Social Security when you are eligible. So starting with Part A, this is labeled as your hospital insurance. Typically, you're not going to have any premium due for your Part A hospital insurance based on the fact that you've likely worked at least 10 years or 40 quarters and paid into the system during that time. So although it's not technically free, there generally won't be any kind of a premium due if you've met that criteria of working those 40 quarters. If you have questions as to whether or not you would owe any kind of premium for Part A of, so of Medicare, you can reach out to Social Security and they should be able to let you know that. So coverage-wise, Part A is going to help with your coverage for inpatient hospital stays, skilled nursing facilities, and hospice care. Part B of your Medicare is labeled your medical insurance. And this is not premium free in the way that Part A may be. The average monthly premium for Part B currently is $170.10 monthly. They haven't published the new premium for, two, for 2023 
And last year I speculated, and I'm not gonna do that this year because they always surprise us. This premium amount can be adjusted based on a higher than average income. So if Social Security says that you are paying a higher amount than 170 10 it's likely because of your income. And they're always going to look back at your last full tax year, which right now is gonna be 2020, um, usually two years prior. Your Part B services are going to cover all of your other Medicare approved services, such as your doctor's services, doctor's appointments, specialist appointments, et cetera, lab testing, MRIs, CAT scans, durable medical equipment, and like I said, most all of your services that are not part of your inpatient care. Now, as I said earlier, both Parts A and Part B are available through Social Security. You do not need to go through an agent to start these. Now, to concentrate on the Part C and the Part D of Medicare, these two parts will necessitate that you either go through an agent or sign up with a carrier or possibly use the website medicare.gov. Part C is also known as Medicare Advantage plans. Um, just briefly, we'll discuss what these do for you. They are very much like what you might have had with some kind of employer managed care coverage plan. Typically, HMOs and PPOs are offered. These are offered through private carriers who have contracts with Medicare and the federal government in order to provide your Medicare services for the calendar year. So in other words, your Part A or Part B would be covered by the Advantage plan and their terms and conditions. They do replace your Medicare for the calendar year. So barring any special circumstances, you are obligated to stay on the plan until December 31st of that year. The last part of Medicare is the Part D. This is your standalone prescription drug plans. Just as with the Advantage plans, these are also available from private carriers. So you can sign up for a plan, or excuse me, a Part D plan through an agent, such as one with a AMAC or straight through Medicare. And again, like I said, that plan is for the calendar year. These Part D plans are intended to work for those who stay on Part A and Part B or just the original Medicare. Because the Part A and the Part B, as we just looked at, do not cover prescription medications. We're gonna go into this a bit further um, in just a moment, but I wanna make sure that you understand these four different parts of Medicare. Part A is your hospital coverage. Part B is your medical coverage. You can replace both of these with a Part C Advantage plan, or you can stay on original Medicare Part A and Part B and potentially get a standalone prescription drug plan to cover your medication needs. So even though you're eligible for Medicare, do I need to take it? This is the first question you need to ask yourself as you're becoming eligible. Do I need to take it right now? And the answer is that if you have creditable coverage, such as an employer or a group plan in place, you can delay participation in Medicare without any type of penalty. Now, for those of you who are approaching your Medicare eligibility, you're probably getting a lot of mail right now. And some of this mail is gonna tell you about your time period um, and warn you about possible penalties if you don't take care of enrolling into Medicare during that time period. However, these penalties might not apply if you have that credible coverage in place. So it's important to know 
that if you do have that credible coverage in place, you can delay Medicare for as long as you have that credible coverage in place. I talk to people every day who are saying, well, I intend to work till 67 or 70 um, and I will have my employer coverage. Do I need to enroll into Medicare if I wanna keep my employer coverage? And the answer to that is no. As long as the co coverage is considered creditable, typically if it's coverage for a group of more than 20 employees, it's gonna qualify as credible. So you, because you are eligible for the Part A and it's premium free, you can participate in just Part A and combine it with your employer or group coverage to enhance the hospital coverage. Potentially between the Medicare Part A and your employer coverage, most or all of your hospital billing may be taken care of, but you can still delay that Part B, which has that premium. And you can delay Part D if you have creditable prescription coverage in place with your employer plan. Now just realize that your Part B and Part D, which is your prescription coverage, are both considered voluntary, but you can be penalized if you do not enroll in, into them when you lose credible coverage. So you wanna keep that deadline in mind. If you are planning to retire, that is the time within two months period to enroll into your Part B and start to look at a prescription drug plan. So as far as timing goes, um, this is important in order to avoid any potential penalties. So if you allow this seven month window to bypass without signing up for Medicare and you do not have other creditable coverage in place, you can be opening yourself up for a penalty. Now keep in mind the seven months is going to start three months prior to the month you become eligible, perhaps your 65th birthday in most cases, the month of eligibility, and then three months following the month you become eligible. Now, if it's, if it's due to disability or being diagnosed with end-stage renal disease or ALS, S, as I mentioned earlier, you wanna keep those, that 25th month date in mind, um, and also, the four months for the end-stage renal disease and the immediate eligibility for your Lou Gehrig's disease diagnosis. So you'd still have the three month period after that, um, but you still have to be aware of those deadlines and dates. So if you do decide that you wanna start on Medicare, how do you start? Does it get started on its own? Or do I need to take action with Social Security? If you know you're becoming eligible for Medicare and you already receive Social Security benefits, Social Security will take the initial steps to provide you with Medicare. You'll usually receive something in the mail indicating that your Part A and Part B are starting in three to four months. It is up to you to let Social Security know if you do not want to participate in Medicare at that time, especially with Part B, since you have that premium. If you're not receiving Social Security benefits, in most cases, you're turning 65, maybe you're still working, or you're retiring at 65, and you want to start your Medicare, you would need to contact Social Security to let them know, and they will get your Medicare started. If you're not collecting Social Security benefits and you do start your Medicare, you will be billed quarterly for the premium for Part B. So from it becoming eligible for Medicare, what are your options at that point? So the first option is to participate just in the original Medicare, the Parts A and the Part B. You would have your hospital coverage and you would have your medical coverage. 
it's important to know though, that you will have out-of-pocket costs associated with these coverages and you need to be prepared for those. Medicare, unfortunately, does not pay for anything at 100%. There are some costs that you are going to be exposed to if you have just Part A and Part B of Medicare as your insurance. So let's start with an inpatient hospital stay, your Part A. You would be billed a deductible of $1,556 for a hospital stay once you become inpatient in the hospital. This deductible will cover you for the first 60 days in the hospital. Now, this is just covering the facility costs. There may be further charges under Part B for your doctor services. But right now we're just focusing on the Part A costs. If your stay in the hospital goes beyond 60 consecutive days, you will start to be charged a copay for days 61 through 90 in the hospital. You would be charged $389 per day. If you had the terrible misfortune of being in the hospital beyond 90 days, that copay is actually going to double to $778 per day. And Medicare's hospital coverage only covers you for 150 days in the hospital over your lifetime. If you were to be in the hospital beyond 150 days total, you would be responsible for 100% of the costs if you had just Part A and Part B of Medicare. If you need a skilled nursing facility, not to be confused with a nursing home, a skilled nursing facility is, a more, is more of a physical therapy step down from the hospital. Medicare will cover the first 20 days at this facility at no cost to you. For every day you still need to be in that skilled nursing facility from days 21 through 100, you would pay $194.50 per day. And if you needed to be in the skilled nursing facility beyond 100 days, you would be responsible for 100% of the cost. Now for part B, this is your medical coverage, your doctor's visits, lab work, et cetera. You will have an annual deductible of $233, that's the 2022 cost for deductible. It'll likely adjust in 2023. This has to be met. And once you have met the deductible, you'll be in a shared coinsurance with Medicare in which Medicare Part B will typically pick up 80% of the cost and you'd be responsible for the remaining 20%. The exception, to this is lab work and preventive services, which are usually covered at 100% by your Part B if they meet Medicare's criteria. Now, you also may be exposed to something called excess charges. This is a 15% charge rendered by physicians, um, a small percentage of physicians that do not accept what Medicare assignment is or reimbursement for a particular service. Not going to spend a lot of time on that because it's fairly rare, um, but you could discuss specifics around that with an agent if you were considering um, the original Medicare. So one of the nice things about staying with Medicare Part A and Part B is that you will have no network of providers like the Advantage plans do because they're HMO and PPOs. If you decide to stay on Original Medicare, you can go anywhere in the United States or its territories that accepts Medicare. Now remember, prescriptions are not covered, so those who stay on Part A and Part B of Medicare will generally also participate in a separate Part D plan there will be an additional premium to cover these prescription needs. 
One of the negative aspects of having just original Medicare for your medical coverage is that it's not going to have what's called a maximum out of pocket, meaning that there's no ceiling or limit to what you can be billed. Every dime that you owe beyond what Medicare covers, no matter how much that turns out to be, would be re your responsibility. One of the options that many of the beneficiaries really enjoy about staying on Medicare Part A and Part B is that they can add a secondary insurance to this coverage. This is what we call a Medigap or a Medicare supplement plan. Now this is going to be a, an additional premium and will cover the costs of Medicare approved services. There's multiple plan options to choose from, and the cost of these is completely dependent upon the plan that you choose. Each of the plans have different types of coverage, and they're all usually labeled with a letter. There are three states that are an exception to this, Minnesota, Massachusetts, and Wisconsin, but the remainder of the states are going to label these supplemental or Madagot plans with a letter. And whichever letter designator comes with it, such as a plan called Plan G, all of those core benefits are standardized and identical no matter what carrier you purchase it from. For instance, here at AMAC, we use approximately 10 different carriers and will attempt to find the lowest cost for say a plan G so that you're paying the least amount for the same coverage. Now your part B will still need to be paid to social security. Remember, this is only secondary insurance, this part plan G. You have to have part A and part B in place for it to be secondary to. You can apply for a supplemental or Medigap plan at any time once you are on the original Medicare or coming onto it within three months of the Medicare getting started. If you don't have any other coverage in place, such as an Advantage plan, we're not going to sell you more insurance than you need, and it's not legal to take a supplemental plan with an Advantage plan. These are plans, the supplements are for people who are on original Medicare and typically have no other coverage to work with that. So although you can apply at any time, the first six months after your Part B starts is called your open enrollment period. During your open enrollment period, this allows you to apply for any of the supplemental plans without having medical underwriting, meaning that they won't ask you health questions, they can't assess, assess the risk of your health, and they have to accept you into the plan that you choose. So none of that is allowed during that six month open enrollment period. Now, I mentioned that there are 10 different plans to choose from, but they are typically not all sold competitively. It's also important to know that you cannot combine a supplement plan, like I said, with an Advantage plan. You take one or the other. A supplement is only going to work for people who are receiving Medicare Part A and Part B and haven't replaced it with different coverage. So how would you know which Medigap plan is going to be best for you? So first thing I recommend is to talk to an agent like those at AMAC. They have the ability to compare the prices in your area and we are contract with multiple very competitive carriers. Whichever of the carriers that can offer your plan of interest at the lowest price is typically what we're going to quote to you. Remember, the coverages are literally identical. So in many cases, all we're doing is trying to find you the lowest cost available for that coverage. We only work with A-rated companies 
So we know that any quote we provide you is going to be a quality company that we stand behind. Now costs can be affected by things like using tobacco, whether or not you qualify for a household discount, and an agent can help you out with those as well. So let's talk quickly about the plans that are typically what we are looking at and sold most often. Starting with the plan F, this is the most comprehensive coverage available in a Medigap or supplement plan, but not everyone is eligible for a plan F any longer. If your part A and your part B of Medicare were effective after January 1st of 2020, the plan F and the plan C are no longer options for you. For those who are still eligible, the plan F will cover all Medicare eligible costs after Medicare Part A and Part B have paid their portion. Part plan F comes in a high deductible option as well. And this works very much like the regular plan F, except that the plan, the supplement plan would not pay coverage until you had met a deductible of $2,490. If your Part A and Part B effective dates come after that January 1st, 2020 deadline date, your plan G, as in girl, is gonna be your most comprehensive coverage available to you. Plan G also has that high deductible option and again, that deductible amount would be $2,490 that you would pay of after Medicare had paid its portion before the high deductible plan G would step in and start to cover its portion. So talking a little bit about plan F, plan G and also plan N. The rest of this graph shows the other plans, but we don't typically look at them because they're not very competitively priced. Um, the plan F, as you can see in the middle of the chart, pays 100% of all of those Medicare eligible charges that are delineated under the benefits on the left-hand side. Sorry, as a secondary insurance, so we'll add a few things that Medicare does not cover. So if you look at that left hand column, what are some of the gaps and what is covered under the plan F? It's going to cover all of your coinsurance and hospital costs and add an additional 365 days after Medicare benefits are used up. Remember, we spoke earlier, Medicare caps out on its own at 150 days total in the hospital, any of these supplements will add an additional year onto that number of covered days. The plan F is also gonna cover all of the part B coinsurance, which is the 20% we talked about. It's gonna cover the first three pints of blood. Medicare doesn't typically provide coverage for that. It's gonna pay all of your Part A hospice care. It will also cover your Part A and Part B deductibles. It will provide for your any Part B excess charges and also provide some foreign travel emergency coverage. These coverages outside of the country do have plan limits. So if you find yourself with an emergency outside of the United States and you're in your first 60 days of travel, it will come with a $250 deductible. The plan will pay 80% and it's a lifetime limit of coverage of $50,000. Now remember, the supplement is not going to add a prescription drug plan to your coverage. You're not getting that from Medicare A and B. And because the supplement is paying after the Medicare parts A and B, it's not going to pick up drug coverage. So you would typically want to look at adding a part D standalone prescription drug to your coverage. So just to look quickly at the plan G, 
This is the next most comprehensive coverage and it's very similar to the plan F. Now, this is the most comprehensive coverage that is available to newly eligible Medicare recipients. The only difference between the plan F and the plan G is that with the plan G, you would be responsible for the part B deductible. And that's that annual amount of $233. That's not covered under plan G. So that would come out of a recipient's pocket. If you're wondering why that's not available anymore, the, the plan F, um, this was um, a law called MACRA, the um, acronym. And one of the stipulations in that law was that new recipients of Medicare would be responsible for at least covering that deductible amount. Um, sort of them, M Medicare and the government wanting, do you wanting you to have skin in the game, so to speak. Um, so one other supplement that can be a viable option and is often purchased is the plan N, the very last one on, in the columns on this sheet. It's similar to the plan F and the plan G. There's a few differences. Again, you would be responsible for the $233 Part B deductible. It will not cover those excess charges that we talked briefly about earlier. These are charges that um, uh, about 10% of doctors um, have requested of Medicare to balance bill, make up the difference of up to 15% between what Medicare will reimburse them for a service and what they feel that they need in order to um, clear and make um, cover their charges. So they can only go up to 15% beyond what Medicare will um, reimburse them at. And like I said, it's a small percentage of doctors. It's a question you can always ask doctors before you see them whether or not they accept Medicare assignment, which is the amount that Medicare will pay them. And if they accept that assignment, then you will not be charged excess charges. Now, Another thing that makes the plan N different is that you would have some co-pays with plan N. These are set dollar amounts on certain services. So with a plan N, you can have a copay of up to $20 at your doctor's visits, both primary care and specialists, and a copay of $50 if you were to visit an emergency room and not be admitted to the hospital within 24 hours. Um, these are the three plans that we will typically discuss with those seeking out information on Medicare supplements. Um, you may be asking, well, why are the rest of the plans available? Um, and so in general, carriers may offer the other plans, but not, are not necessarily interested in selling all 10 plans. Um, it can get cumbersome for them to, to track the benefits, et cetera. So they, though they may offer something like a K plan where it's covering 50% or an L plan where it's co covering 75%, the premiums for these may be as much as, if not more than a plan G or a plan N or a plan, even a plan F because the carriers are not particularly interested in selling those plans. So they will um, price them um, non-competitively to discourage purchasing of them. So going on to other Medicare options. So we've looked at staying with original Medicare and purchasing a supplement, but you also have the option to participate in an Advantage plan, also known as Medicare Part C. If you decide an Advantage plan is the way you would like to go, then you are agreeing to have a private carrier cover your Medicare needs for the calendar year. So in other words, instead of the prices that we talked about earlier for Part A and Part B deductibles and 20% coinsurance, you now have agreed to pay the terms and conditions 
from the private carrier. Medicare Advantage plans will generally have a lower premium than your Medicare supplement plans, but you still have costs associated with the services received. So as an example, you may have a $20 copay to see a primary care physician, a $50 copay to see a specialist, a hospital stay may require you paying between $100 to $300 per day out of pocket for the first few days. You may have a copay of $75 for an x-ray. These are just examples of what the out-of-pocket costs can be, but it gives you an idea that even though you're not paying, that they are not paying on Medicare's terms and conditions, they will have their own terms and conditions. And in some cases, you may find you pay more than if you'd stayed on original Medicare. And sometimes you'll find that you, the service costs less than if you had stayed on original Medicare. Please know that Medic if Medicare is providing a service for hospital or medical needs, the Advantage plan must by law also provide that service. It's just the costs that can be very different. As I mentioned before, premiums for the Advantage plans are generally much lower and even as low as $0. So they're not costing additional premium, but you'll have those out-of-pocket costs. Now, I'm sure you've seen the commercials on TV that talk about these $0 plans, how they're no charge to you. So technically, you are still paying for these plans because you have to keep your Part B of Medicare in place with Social Security. Remember, that's gonna be a premium of $170.10 a month at least. This money would then be diverted if you took an Advantage plan to the private carrier that you enrolled into to have that coverage with an Advantage plan. So even though you're not paying the private carrier any additional money, you will have those additional costs in the form of copays. So I'm not promising that every Advantage plan out there will be a $0 premium, but many of them are. Um, so when you are working with an agent, they may tell you about a plan that has no additional costs. Um, or they may have a plan that is $20 a month, um, still significantly lower than a supplement, um, but it's important to understand how the coverage is different. So one of the nice things about having an Advantage plan over staying on original Medicare is that it may include things that Medicare doesn't normally cover. Some of the examples are on this slide. Medicare isn't normally comprehensive in the way of vision, dental, and hearing, but many Advantage plans, in order to tempt you to purchase their products, will generally offer these additional Medicare benefits. Medicare will cover medical necessities for dental, vision, and hearing. For example, if you get in a car wreck and perhaps you lose some teeth or break your jaw, then Medicare would generally cover perhaps any loose teeth, um, these costs would be medically necessary and covered by Medicare. But things like having your teeth cleaned or cavities, bridge work, these items are not generally gonna be covered under Medicare. An Advantage plan, however, might add this additional coverage towards more comprehensive dental and vision needs not otherwise handled by Medicare. Another nice thing about having an Advantage plan is you would generally have your wellness visits covered. Um, things like your primary, your annual uh, physical, um, your PSA screenings, mammograms, things like that are covered um, without any out-of-pocket copay. Wellness coverage can also include things like silver sneakers or silver and fit. These are programs that allow you free memberships to local fitness facilities. They also usually, the plan, the Advantage plans will also, also, excuse me, add the prescription drug coverage within the plans. 
So you wouldn't have to purchase a separate Part D plan. In fact, you wouldn't be eligible to with an Advantage plan. The prescription drug plan and coverage would be part of the coverage that the Advantage plan is offering or you forego that coverage if you choose to with an Advantage plan that doesn't include the drug coverage. It doesn't affect the premium at all. Zero dollar plans do include the prescription drug coverage very often. So just keep in mind that if the plan that you enroll into is a zero dollar premium, you wouldn't be paying anything additional to have the prescription drug coverage. So one of the most important things that an Advantage plan offers you that staying on original Medicare and not taking any additional coverage would not offer you is having a maximum out of pocket or a ceiling or limit on what your out of pocket expenses can reach in a given year. So once you've reached that limit out of your pocket, then the plan is gonna cover 100% as long as it's one of the normally approved services and within that calendar year. The only thing left that you would have to pay is your copay or coinsurance for your medications and any premium if you did have one. So your maximum amount of pockets are set by the plans, but Medicare does set a cap on those. Right now, the most an HMO plan can, can set the limit at is $7,550. And I just wanna remind you, there's no, cov no cap on that if you stay with just original Medicare Part A and Part B as your medical coverage. You'd be responsible for 100% of your portion, no matter how high that number got. So now that this, this is a plan maximum, that means that the plan will stop coming to you for those out-of-pocket costs. Now, with a PPO plan, that maximum is set um, even higher. Um, and I believe it's $11,300. Um, that's if you go in and out of network as a PPO plan will allow you to do. If you stay completely in network with a PPO plan, you're typically looking at a lower maximum amount of pocket. So as you're considering Advantage plans, you, it's important to realize that they are subject to Medicare's five-star rating system. If you were to shop on your own and you went to Medicare's website, you'll see each plan has a star rating between one and five stars. This is a convenient way for you to be able to compare the plan's effectiveness based on criteria such as the doctors and network, the prices, the, the co-pays, customer satisfaction, things like that. And it allows you to one weigh one plan against another as you're considering your options. It is still a good idea to look more closely at that plan to find out where your costs associated, such as seeing your doctor or staying in the hospital are gonna come in. And these ratings can change each year. If when you become first eligible for Medicare, you participate in a plan like an Advantage plan, you wanna be aware of the dates October 15th through December 7th. This is called the annual enrollment period. This period allows you to make that change to your plan for the new year starting January 1st. You'll also see much more of those commercials telling you about those plans that are no cost to you. Um, but now you realize that it's important to look at the costs as you use those types of plans to understand that they are not free. Um, you will pay out of pocket on some of your um, services. But during that annual enrollment, period is your opportunity to compare the coverage that you have with how the plans are offering the next year. And you can make a change up until the end of that day, December 7th. You don't necessarily have to make a change. If your plan is rolling into the next year and you take no action, you'll automatically be rolled into the next year. You will receive an annual notice of change in September 
to let you know how the plan is changing for the new year. So it's important to keep an eye out for that, especially when you have these Advantage plans. Um, they are gonna advise you whether or not the plan is continuing as well. So if your plan is not renewing for the new year, they will advise you that the plan is ending and that you need to make sure to use the annual enrollment period to enroll into something new. If you fail to do that and the new year starts, you'll likely be returned to the original Medicare Part A and Part B for your coverage. And you may have to wait until the next annual enrollment before you could enroll back into an Advantage plan. So when we talk about Advantage plans, we're going to typically talk about HMO and PPO style coverage. I wanna make sure you're aware of the differences between these styles of plans. We're gonna start with the HMO. Now this stands for Health Maintenance Organization. HMO plans generally require that you have a designated primary care physician and generally will have you go to your primary care physician to receive referrals to see specialists. If you do not follow the plan's rules for services, such as staying within the plan's network, you most likely will pay for your own coverage at 100%. So in other words, HMOs require you stay within the established network for routine care. They will cover emergency and urgent care services out, outside of the network. And they'll also cover things like out of area renal dialysis for things like permanent kidney failure or end stage renal disease. But routine care must be within the HMO's network in order for it to be covered. PPO stands for Preferred Provider Organization. These will generally be more flexible. It will allow you to go to a doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare, but know that they will generally pay, you will generally pay a higher price for going outside of the network. So just like the HMO plans, there is an established network. However, the plan allows you to go out of the network. So it's important to know that typically you will not be required to use a primary care physician to see specialists. Sometimes your premiums or co-pays and co-insurance are gonna be higher than with some of your HMO options because of the flexibility that a PPO is affording you. There are plans which are generally looked at by people who spend a lot of time outside of their home network coverage area. For instance, like a snowbird who may live part of the year in New York, but comes for Florida for the other part of the year. They might need a PPO plan in order to establish a doctor that they can see outside of their network while they are away from home. More and more though, PPO plans are providing travel benefits, meaning that they will allow you to use the company's PPO network as an in-network benefit when you are traveling up to maybe six months. So it's important to look for that in the stipulations of a plan. So how do we determine which type of plan works best for you? Um, as an agent, when we work with you, we're gonna look at certain aspects of your lifestyle. Do you travel a lot? Do you travel for long periods of time outside of your home network? Are your doctors important to you? Do you wanna to continue to see the doctors you see now? All of these are generally network style plans that determine, these are generally things you need to determine before you enroll into a network style plan. Whether or not your doctor is in network, whether the hospital you like to go to is in network, will the plan cover your prescriptions? As an agent, we always try to look at your medications with your permission, of course, to try, try to determine which of these plans can cover your medications at the lowest cost to you while allowing you to use the pharmacy of your choice. And lastly, are you overall satisfied with the costs associated with the Advantage plan? Am I agreeable to their co-pays and co-insurance as listed in the plan's summary of benefits? These are all things an agent can assist you in doing, but you're welcome to do them on your own as well. You can visit medicare.gov at any time to look at their website. 
you simply put in your zip code and we'll ask you whether or not you want to input your medications. And then a list of plans in your area will be provided to you. Each one of these plans have an ability to look close deeply into their costs and even enroll yourself if you like to, as long as you're eligible for Medicare at that time. I encourage you to look closely at all of their costs, their summary of benefits, and even their evidence of coverage if you're considering doing this research on your own. So just to summarize the information for you so that you understand what your choices are, First, once again, if you decide you even want to go on to Medicare, you can call an agent and compare your employer coverage or whether or not Medicare might be lower in cost and or more comprehensive coverage than your group coverage. Remember, as long as you have group coverage in place and it's considered creditable coverage, you can delay your participation in Medicare for as long as that coverage stays in place. If you drop employer coverage and go on to Medicare, be advised that you may not be able to go back to your employer coverage once you make that move. So it's an important decision to consider. You should talk with your HR department about that option, whether or not your coverage is considered creditable and what your costs out of your pocket are. If you did decide to come on to Medicare, you can combine that with group coverage. You would have part A and part B. The group coverage in between the two they would coordinate, one would pay primary and one will pay secondary. Now that decision of who pays primary and who pays secondary is based on how many employees are in your company. Regardless, between the two things, all or most of your costs should be paid. Now realize your Part B has started and you cannot get a supplement, a supplement currently with group coverage, that would be over insurance. If you wait to enroll beyond six months into a supplement plan, you would no longer have that six month open enrollment window to allow you a supplement plan with no medical underwriting. So you wanna consider that if you have health conditions that may make it difficult to get into a supplement. I recommend calling an agent to discuss all of those details with you. You can decide to stay with Medicare Parts A and B, add on a Part D standalone prescription drug plan, or that Medigap supplement plan to help you cover those costs that would normally be billed, or you can elect to have an Advantage plan. And like I said earlier, you can't have both. You can't have one covering the other. Um, if, you, if you do decide to stay on Medicare, you can get assistance with that secondary insurance called a supplement plan, or you can decide to have your Medicare needs met by the private carrier's Advantage plan, typically an HMO or PPO style plan. So that pretty much wraps up my presentation on Medicare and giving you a deep dive into how it works. My contact information is here on the screen. You can reach me 9 to 5 Eastern Time at 800-334-9330. My extension is 2529. You can also use my email, which is my first name, D, or excuse me, my first initial D for Deanna. My last name, Cameron, spelled C-A-M-E-R-O-N at AMAC, A-M-A-C dot U-S. 